Making normal maps can be a scary thing, but it's a necessary thing if you're trying to create game assets and you're trying to save as much geometry as you can. Now here I have two separate hinges, and the one on the left is 29,448 triangles, and the one on the right is only 882 triangles. And if I switch to wireframe mode, you can see the difference in density there. On the right, I don't have any screws at all. That's all baked down normal map detail from these high poly screws over here. There is an issue though, when you're trying to bake something like this, and this is demonstrated on this silver one here. This was what was initially happening to me, where you could see the screws on the corners are all skewed and they look like they're bending inwards, whereas the ones in the middle are straight. And what was happening here, if I just switch into edit mode, you can see the vertex normals are bending outwards. Now this is because this is a smooth shaded mesh. Now if you needed to see your vertex normals, you can go to this drop down here by the viewport overlays and select your vertex normals here, and you can adjust your size. Now, I didn't know this was the problem, but Warren Marshall did. <laughs> so big shout out to Warren Marshall. Definitely go over and watch his video, Quick Tip Number 38, Normal Map Skewing, because he explains it a lot better than I can. Now, he's using Modo, but the principle is the same in Blender. If I go to the low poly one that is good here, where the normal maps are nice and straight, and basically it's solved by putting a loop cut through the area that needs to be straight. So here I've got one loop cut going horizontal, and I've got another loop cut going vertically. Now, you may not need to do the vertical one depending on your situation, but in my case, I actually did need it. So I put uh, one there, one there, one there. Basically, it's putting a vertex right in the center, and you can see that coming off of that vertex, you can see that it's nice and straight. It's a perfectly straight, perpendicular line, and that's exactly what you want. And another thing that I'd definitely recommend to go and check out is the tool bag baking tutorial from the Marmoset tool bag website, so marmoset.co. And this is a fantastic information on here that you really should read, even though it's about using Marmoset Toolbag. The principle applies to Blender as well. I recommend reading the whole thing, but on the Baking Basics section, this goes into a lot of detail about things that can go wrong and how things work in the baking. And again, here you can see normal map skewing. Now in Marmoset Toolbag, there's actually a tool where you can fix it just by painting a little map. But in Blender, fixing it using a loop cut is the way to go for me, and hope this little tip will help you out. So just a demonstration of the actual baking process. First, you're going to want to have your high poly mesh and whatever objects you're trying to bake down with it. And then you're going to want to have your low poly mesh sitting in the exact same spot. Now here you can see these screws are actually floating above the surface, and that means they're not going to bake down properly without using a cage. And the cage is really simple. It's just a duplicate of this low poly mesh and then it's scaled up a little bit. So if I select my cage here, turn it on, you can see it's a little bit fatter. And if I go into edit mode and I hit Alt S to use shrink or fatten, and I hit S again to use even thickness, I hold down shift and move the mouse. So basically you're gonna scale that cage up just until the items disappear, and then you're good. I'm gonna just switch this to wireframe so that I can see what's going on here. Now, I've actually got a triangulate modifier running, and this is one of the tips that was pointed out, that if you triangulate your mesh ahead of time, you're not gonna have issues where you bring it into another program that decides to triangulate it differently. So that's why I've got a triangulate modifier on the cage and also on the low poly mesh, because they need to have the same number of vertices for it to work. And then basically to actually bake, you're gonna to wanna to create a new image and we'll just call this. And I like to bake at a larger size because you can scale this down later by half. So 4096 will become like 2048. And that'll give you better anti-aliasing because when you're baking in Blender, you don't bake with anti-aliasing. And so that's kind of a problem and you'll get jagged edges. So bake at a larger size and then scale down later in GIMP or in Photoshop. And make sure 32-bit float is checked because you get a lot better results. Now for the actual bake color, you don't have to do this, but I like to just bake a neutral flat normal map color. So it's just 0 0.5, 0 0.5, and 1 in blue. And then you just push OK. And the last thing you have to do is to make sure under image up here in your end tab, make sure you change color space to non-color when you're baking. And that way you'll bake with the correct color that's required for a normal map. And over here in your low poly mesh, make sure that you have your texture 
that you just created make sure that that is loaded now right now it's not so i'm going to select that one to make sure we're baking into the right texture and i don't have it plugged in because if you have it plugged in it'll give you an error message saying there's a circular dependency so you can just leave that unplugged I just make sure it's selected though so that blender knows that's the image you want to bake to the other thing to make sure is that if you have any mirror modifier on your low poly mesh make sure that the render setting is turned off so that's just gray like that otherwise you could get issues with baking uv islands that are stacked on top of each other and even if you don't have a mirror modifier running when you go into edit mode make sure that you don't have any uv islands that are sitting on top of each other if they're sitting on top of each other that can cause major issues when you're trying to bake so if you do some uv stacking and there's nothing wrong with stacking uvs because that helps to save texture space but just when you're doing the actual baking process make sure to move those off to the side by one unit and that way it will stay outside of the zero to one space and not be factored in when you're baking that way you won't get any kinds of problems that look like this and then the rest is very simple you basically just select your high poly all the high poly stuff that you're going to be baking so i'm selecting all the screws here i'm shift and clicking on that and then the high poly plate and then the last thing you want to select is the low poly object that you're baking down to so that's right here and i'm selecting that last so now we're just going to come up to the render properties settings and you have to make sure you're in the cycles render engine because currently ev does not support baking and i also have gpu compute selected so that it can take advantage of my graphics card and regarding that if you come up to edit preferences and on the system tab you can choose which setting is best for your system just close that and over here the other thing you need to check is your render samples so right now noise threshold might be checked we don't need that we can turn that off and we can just set a fixed number of samples now here when you're baking generally it doesn't actually matter how much samples you have set so you can set like 32 samples and that's probably more than enough you can even set like 16 samples basically all this affects is your anti-aliasing now the only time where the larger number produces a better result is when you're baking something like ambient occlusion which does take how many samples you have and in that case you might want to bake like 128 256 512 whatever in this case i just had it set to 128 however it's probably technically overkill you could probably set that to 32 or 64 and it would be a little bit faster in the baking all right so now we can just scroll down to the bake section under your influence properties here of course set your bake type to normal and your swizzle in the green here is plus y now if that's set to minus y that's what unreal engine uses and some other programs that's called DirectX. plus y is called opengl and that's what blender uses but the good thing is, is that if you're going to unreal engine Unreal Engine already has a switch to automatically invert your green channel in your normal map. So really there's no purpose to have to bake a normal map at a minus Y because you can basically have the best of both worlds. If you bake it at plus Y in the green channel, Blender can use it and then you can bring it into Unreal Engine, flip the switch and use it in Unreal Engine. You want to make sure that you have selected to active checked and you can check cage because we're using a cage in this case. And when that's blank there, you can just use a eyedropper tool and select your cage object. And you can just leave these things at zero because I found that you get pretty good results when you're using a cage. It's more predictable than when you're not using a cage. You might have to adjust these settings for how far the rays can shoot if you're getting problems. And let's just hit bake. And because I have this as a 4K texture and because I have these individual rather than combined, it's going to take a little bit longer because it's basically baking one, then the next, then the next, then the next, then the next. So it's smarter to actually combine them into one item, all your high poly stuff into one if you can do that. But anyways, we'll just skip ahead here and see what it looks like when it's completed. So here you can see we've got a much better bake and we don't have any skewing. All right, so that is that. And I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please leave a thumbs up. Hope you have a great week ahead and we'll see you next time.